We're live. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Spawn. What? Hold on. Uh, okay. I'm being told by our moderator that this is not a Spawn Temper Con, but an at home Comic Con. What? That's weird, given that it is Spawn Temper. What's going on here? But that's okay. That's okay. Because the, the Super Spawn Bros here have plenty of spikes. We got chains. And we got plenty of edginess to go around. Oh, the skull ring. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am Diego Rivera, creator of Spawn Timber. And with me, I have Josh from Panels to Pixels. Hello. And can I just say what a pleasure it is to be here. The best month of the year. The best comic event of the year. Really the spiritual home of Spawn Timber, if I remember. We got, I want to see a wall of hashtag spawns in the chat to torment Matt Draper, if for nothing else. It's great to be here. Please, hashtag Spawn Timber in the chat. We got the, the number one Spawn fan in the world, Matt Draper. Uh, hello, everyone, and a happy Spawn Timber to you. I hope that you're all uh, rattling your chains in anticipation of this panel. And wow. making his uh, at-home Comic-Con debut is Maddie from The Game Show. Hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? Happy Spawn Timber. Glad to be here. Cannot, I cannot wait. I've got my green light. I've got my skull ring. I'm, I'm good. I'm got ready. That necroplasm just going on. That's I it. love it. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, we are the Super Spawn Brothers panel representing the comic book video games corner of At Home Comic Con. And much like last year, we're here to pitch you some games, but not just one. Like last year, we pitched you the ultimate Superman game, which is just, I don't know why WB hasn't made it yet. You got free ideas just laying there in that video. But this year, we're going to pitch you not one, but four different Spawn games from the each of us. Because everyone knows... If there's another superhero other than Superman that deserves a good Spawn game, that de deserves a good video game, it's not, it's not Wonder Woman. You know, it's not Flash. It's not Avengers. F in the chat for Marvel's Avengers, please. It's, it's Spawn. Spawn is, is next in line. So we're here to, we're, we're here to finally correct the, the travesty that we don't have any good Spawn games. And we're going to go through the history of Spawn games in chronological order. Of course, starting starting with uh, Todd McFarlane, uh, creator of Spawn, Todd McFarlane. I'm Diego Rivera, creator of Spawn Timber. A lot of fans get us confused, but Todd McFarlane on the Super Nintendo. Todd McFarlane Spawn on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it's a simple beat 'em up. And if you guys ever played this one, um, Josh, do you have any uh, experience with, with Spawn on the Super Nintendo? Uh, yeah, I've, I've played this one. Now, it's probably the, the best Spawn game. 100 it's undoubtedly the best. It's undoubtedly the best. Okay, all right. I was going to say that might be contentious, but apparently not. <laughs> no, it, it's to me, I, I consider this to be the Spawn game, uh, the best Spawn video game, because it's really hard to screw up like a simple beat em up. You know, because it, it's funny, like Superman has the same problem where he doesn't really have a good video game, but I consider the best Superman game to be uh, Death and Return, also on the Super Nintendo. So lots of parallels between Superman and Spawn. Yeah, and Spawn just, you know, if you think of Spawn as this like super stylized, super spooky Todd McFarlane thing that we love, I think it translates best to that 2D sprites better than any other attempt that's been made so far. Yeah, that, that's the one thing I'll say about the, uh, this game, that the, the graphics, those, those 16 big graphics, man, just timeless, you know, they age beautifully. Unlike our next game, Spawn the Eternal on PlayStation 1, which I've called one of the worst, if not one of the worst games of all time, one of the worst PlayStation 1 games of all time. It's got all the makings of a terrible game. It's got awful tank controls and an uncooperative camera, uh, just graphics that looks like just vomit everywhere. And if there's one remarkable thing to say about Spawn the Eternal is that while the bulk of the game is like this third person action game where you're you know solving puzzles doing some platforming every time you encounter an enemy it turns into like a, a tekken style 3d fighting game which is you know points for creativity but it, it doesn't work it, it just kind of sucks and uh so next up is spawn on the game boy color which shamefully as diego rivera creator of spawn timber i've never played um but from what i see it's just another simple platforming beat em up kind of thing uh, maybe some content for next year. Spawn Temper. Anyone, uh, anyone ever played Spawn on the Game Boy Color? No, no. I, I don't have any reason to now either. <laughs> uh, creator Spawn Temper hasn't played it. Number one Spawn fan hasn't played it. 
<laughs> the next game I did play, Spawn uh, in the Demon's Hand uh, on the Dreamcast. I recently made a video on this as part of Spawn Timber. Uh, this game, it's weird because it's originally an arcade game that was then ported to the Dreamcast. And you can, t you can very much tell that it's an arcade game when you play it. You got the big timer on the screen. You got your score every time you, you clear a, a stage showing you where you rank in the leaderboards. And it just doesn't translate all that well to a, a console game. It gets repetitive really quick. I kind of compare this to getting a new action figure. Because uh, it, it, the one thing I'll say about Spawn of the Demon Sands is that it's got a large cast of unlockable characters from the Spawn mythos. And every time you unlock a new character, it feels like you're, you know, unboxing a new action figure and they each have their unique little ability. Um, so it's like, you know, oh, you got called Griosto with, with special Kung Fu kick or something like that. Uh, and then the next game, Soul Calibur 2, which is not a spawn game, but he was a guest fighter. in. if you remember, uh, Soul Calibur 2 uh, each got a exclusive character, depending on the system you got it on. Xbox, very fitting with the whole green thing, you know, green necroplasm. Uh, um, GameCube got Zelda, right? The main character from uh, the Zelda games, that, uh, Zelda, that guy. Yeah, uh, Zelda, hero of Zelda. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't even remember who, who the PlayStation 2 got. So Xbox. Yoshimitsu. Uh, whoever that is. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that was <laughs> the Tekken. version I had from Tekken. Yeah, of course. So this, Xbox clearly. The one by a mile getting the coolest character out of the three games. Yeah, you know, like a like a sort of cybernetic ghost samurai who commits seppuku as his finishing move. Not as cool as Spawn. <laughs> it's it's very on brand for Spawn though. Like I could definitely see him being well, in a Spawn comic. It's kind of tragic that because they were on they were console exclusives, we never got to see the Spawn Yoshimitsu face off. I'd love to see that. That's true. Yeah, that, that'd be an interesting matchup. And then after that, we have Spawn Armageddon on the PS2, which was just kind of another generic uh, third-person Devil May Cry-inspired action game. Um, nothing too remarkable about it. Some people might say that is the actual best Spawn game. It's fine. It doesn't do anything great. Uh, and then finally, MK11, which I think has the best-looking Spawn ever, which, which is saying a lot, because in, in whatever shape or form, Spawn always looks cool. And to say... He looks his best, and MK11 is saying a lot, you know. And uh, we got Keith David reprising his role as Spawn, so that that's that was a great treat. And now, what's cool about Spawn and MK11 is that you can customize them with like different uh, armor pieces and capes and colors. So if you've been following Spawn Timber, you'll know that Maddie here has been uh, rolling out a series of digital trading cards uh, throughout the month of Spawn Timber on a daily basis. You know, with the spawn of the day, a different spawn from comics, movies, video games. And what's cool about MK11 is if you go into the customization option, it, even if it's the, the slightest variation of like, oh, I'm going to make his chains a little rustier. That's that's a new spawn of the day. You know, as far as I'm concerned, that's a whole spot. So you have an unlimited supply of spawns of the day for, for all eternity. So isn't yeah, that next year, yeah, 2022 spawn of the day is all going to be MK11 spawns every day. It's rusty chain spawn, <laughs> tattered cape spawn, exactly. Yeah. Cowboy Unlimited. hat spawn. So I'd so yeah, as you can tell, like not not a lot of uh, great spawn games. Uh, I'd say some of his best are just the ones where he, he's a guest character. But we're here to correct that with our spawn video game pitches. And before we get to our pitches, I know I want to remind everyone of the link in the description that'll take you to a donation page for Project Hope. Uh, it's all for a good cause. And you can, you can have a little message every time you donate. So I encourage you to, to throw up some, some hashtag spawn timber in the message there. So, you know, please do I'm gonna so. Put, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. All right. There it is. Hold on. Hashtag SPA. How do you spell spawn? Come on. Number one spawn <laughs> fan of the world. But don't you have it tattooed somewhere on your body? <laughs> I can't show that on, on, Matt, on camera. This Matt Draper fan, has, the con. <laughs> he has a dozen <laughs> spawn tattoos, this guy. <laughs> it is so, lying my rib cage yeah do you have the, the melboja oh the giant melboja. that'll yeah. that'll really be <laughs> that's how you get the ladies just giant you, right you know there. what i've always wondered about that that and was that always the intention because i always saw it like oh as a cool design but then i was like oh you're marked by the m of melboja that like, you think todd like that no. was intentional from no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even well, name melboja <laughs> 
Well, well, Todd came up with none of the good stuff in Spawn, <laughs> except for the design. I, I remember reading that and being like, oh, it's an M. And then, oh, yeah. And uh, Violator, he's kind of got an he, M on his he's face. He's got it too. too, yeah. And he's like, of course, it's for Malvolia. And, and as a reader, I was like, nah, you're lying now, Todd. It's, it's probably for McFarlane, most likely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Th- that's genius. That That's perfect. That's exactly what we need. <laughs> So with that, let's jump into our pitches. And we're going to start with uh, Maddie. I'm really excited to see what you have in store. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Diego. Wow, what an intro. Um, hi, everyone. Right. So um, we discussed about Spawn and about how, in many ways, Spawn is the greatest character in all of literature in that he can work in any time period and he can work in any genre. And to demonstrate that, the first uh pitch that uh, I've, I'm going to show to you guys today is my pitch of what I think Spawn most perfectly suits, being that he is the most rock and roll uh, comic book character there is. So I'm going to share my screen. So if you guys uh, I'm just going to click and just hopefully you'll, if you can let me know in the chat once you can see this. It's beautiful. Can you guys Man. see this? Wow. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So the pitch is spawn axe shredder and this is uh, a rhythm game because spawn is the most heavy metal comic book character ever so we're going to essentially do guitar hero spawn it's amazing and as you can see here the strap line is the hardest rhythm game this side of hell <laughs> <laughs> so we are gonna do all metal, all the time, Guitar Hero, solo shredding. But this isn't going to be, um, we're going to just go through the presentation and I'll, then I'll give you the big elevator pitch. But basically, so here's the idea, right? It's, a, it, it's, it's ex, what you said about Xbox is green. So that's why I did the packaging mock-up as green because it's perfect. So the first thing that you get with the game is it comes with a big guitar that you can play and, and, and uh, if for those non-spawn fans i mean matt draper would know this already but spawns axe is called ruin and um and so this is the guitar that comes in the package and it comes with a giant chain it's for the guitar strap uh xbox pre-order exclusive is the chain is green and then we'll do you know maybe there'll be like a switch version but it is a fully most controlled axe so you're shredding out on your guitar but at the same time, it's also a VR game because we're not just going to go in simple, just playing some guitars because that's too easy. That's too simple for Spawn. Spawn's above that. We're also in VR. <laughs> and what's great about this is it comes with a big sticker that you can stick on the front of your VR headset so that now you look like Spawn, which is perfect. But then you're thinking, well, that's kind of cool, right? I'm in VR. I'm playing a guitar. That's kind of cool. But we need to go one step further. So you also get the Spawn <laughs> costume. And this comes with every copy of the game. So you dress up as Spawn, you're shredding on your guitar, and, and the whole thing is all about chains. Now, the, the, the costume is absolutely necessary. There's, there's, you can't play it without because, because it, it has motion controls built into the costume. And this is where we're going to talk about how this is going to work because we're basically talking Beat Saber meets, um, meets Guitar Hero, meets Rock Band, all this stuff all combined in, right? Spawn X Shredder. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. That's all we needed from that. That was amazing. You're, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so so the trick, imagine is so you've got the spawn outfit on, you've got your guitar, and every single track has been chosen to essentially just be the most insanely fast, mindless metal tracks ever. Most I, I've actually curated a few tracks, but you know, if you guys want to start jumping in the chat, you want to start suggesting some tracks for the spawn game. Please go right on ahead. But yeah, so you've got your mask on, you've got your sticker, and you've got the full suit. So you're ready, you're cosplaying every time you want to play this because you need to feel like Spawn. You know, they, when people said that the Sony Spider-Man game makes you really feel like Spider-Man, does it, Toffee? You don't feel like Spider-Man. Dressing as Spawn and holding an axe, now you feel like Spawn, right? That's, that's what we're going for. I, I can't deny it. I really would feel like Spawn. I would start <laughs> lacing up my face just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like it's, we're calling it face splitting metal action so that's certainly you're going to need the boot lace by the time you're done in here right yeah Throw so the horns can can we get horn emojis in the chat is that yeah i'm sure we can <laughs> um 
So imagine it's like Guitar Hero. So you've got the guitar kind of thing going off into the distance. But in the distance, you've got Malbolgia and he's there taunting you. And there's all the minions in hell, you know, and Spawn the movie. There's just all the rows upon rows. And there's all these demons and you're just, and Spawn's job is just to be shredding super crazy fast guitar this entire time. So you're playing normal Guitar Hero, but so you're playing guitar and you're, and you're doing the notes and you're building up your, uh, building up your necroplasm meter the whole time, hitting good notes, doing good things. Like this. this is great. But there's, there's flying enemies as well. So you're not just, it's not just enough that you've got to play the rhythm game. There's enemies that are coming at you. So you're going to have to be tactical at certain points. You have to stop playing guitar and you have to use the spawn gauntlet and you have to point at the bad guys, right? And, and as you point, and you have to do this in time to the music as well. So like you're on stage, imagine it's kind of, you're at Donington, you're like doing your guitar solo and you're pointing in the crowd in time to the music. And then this is what's directing the chains to fly out and attack the flying enemies. <laughs> But you can't stop playing guitar for too long. So you have to keep back, get, getting back on the jams. And it's a non-stop assault, a non-stop heavy metal assault of demons and flames and chains flying at you all the time. But as the necro, necroplasm meter is building up, you can uh, decide to unleash this early on, kind of like a fighting game. You can, you can just do one bar of meter by unleashing maybe some magic attacks, some necroplasm attacks. And the way you do this, again, it's all built into the gloves, is you, you throw up the horns, this is this and activates your necroplasm mode. There's multiple ways you can use your necroplasm. So you can maybe shoot some spells, maybe thwipping could be one of them, right? You're kind of shooting out or you could use it to be like a combo booster. So you could you could build your necroplasm bar all the way up and then you're just using that as it and you go into necroplasm mode. So the screen goes green. There's flames everywhere. Everything on screens on fire and you're just rocking out your big guitar solo. Okay, so this is like the first level. <laughs> oh this my is the, God. Right, so this is like the tutorial because the idea here is I want this game to be from, from second one, from the second you're in the game, you're fully wrapped, you're, you're amped up to 100%. And it's, it'll be a short game because there's, there's no real narrative here. There's no story. I took this inspiration directly from Spawn the Comic. There's no <laughs> So essentially, the whole and the whole, all these tracks are quite short as well. So the whole thing just assaults you for like maybe like thirty minutes at a time, and until you've just absolutely had enough, you know, because because I don't want this to be a simple rhythm game, nor do I want it to be Beat Saber, because those are too casual for Spawn. It needs to be both at the same time, all the time. So, what I'm envisioning is once we've played some of this, we've built up some meter, we've fought some enemies, we're going down through the layers of hell. So we're doing the 12 layers of hell. At the end of each stage, we'll fight a boss. And so Spawn is always on guitar, but at the end of stage one, Angela will fly down. And Angela has her own musical instrument. And then it goes into a kind of like, you know, bass battle in uh, Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> yes. It then goes into this mode. It's then head to head. It's, it's Spawn versus Angela. And Angela's on the drums. And so she starts <laughs> rocking out some drum solos. And then you've got to deflect the notes as they're flying at you and have to use your own necro beat meter. You've got to launch some chains. This whole thing's built up. And then after you defeat Angela, level two starts. And it's the same thing, but now it's just probably more. There's just more enemies now and there's more chains. And then as you go through, so each boss battle has a specific song chosen. And this is quite an important part of it because this is where you have to really spend some time thinking about songs that are going to suit each of these. So, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some of my examples, and I'm happy at this point to open the floor up. If there's anything in the chat we can see, or maybe some of you guys, you might have some ideas. I might have inspired you as I've been talking here. But An Angela is Angel of Death by Slayer. Oh, and before I should mention, I've already licensed all these tracks, by the way. So this is already paid for. So you don't have to worry about any copyright infringement. I'm so confident this is going to do well. So we got Angel of Death by Slayer. I mean, obviously that's an obvious one. Um, Chapel which would be level two, because this would be the big reveal. Yes. Yes, we're, we're retconning Chapel. Chapel's now back in. <laughs> and I, Un, again, I'm retconning the retcon. Uh, like Unretconning the retcon. I, again, I've spoken to Rob Liefeld. He's cool with this. He's fine with it. So <laughs> Chapel turns up and it's more human than human by white, uh, by white zombie, because he's like an augmented human. So it's perfect. It's perfect for this, right? Uh, overkill is overkill by Motorhead. You can oh, see where I'm yeah. going with this. Most of the time, it's just word association. We don't have to think about the themes too much. <laughs> and um, Redeemer 
obviously that's going to be quite a good one because that's like the anti-spawn level that'll be really good and that's Re- redeemer of souls by judas priest clown is clown by corn again you can see you see how this works right it's, it's easy the game writes itself the game writes itself <laughs> Todd has done such a good job. Todd's done all the, the heavy lifting for us here. But we, don't, we don't even need to do that much work. The Spawn, the Spawn universe gives us everything we need. And then my fine finale of the game is once you've gone through the 12 levels. I've not, I've not done all of them. Does anyone? I can't see. Oh, the cape is DLC. That's a good that's a, that's a suggestion from the... That's a good, good comment. Um, I've not seen anyone in the chat come up with any other tracks, but essentially imagine we're going to do 12 spawn characters. There's 12 metal tracks. And then we get to the big finale and it's the showdown with Malbolgia. And Malbolgia has a backing band. So it's not just you versus Malbolgia. He's got a whole band and, and they're an EP. You, you, you don't just have one track. There's going to be like a bunch of songs all related. And the, the short list I have is uh, the, the three parter is Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue. The Conjuring by Megadeth. Because there's like one line in it where he's like, don't wake the devil. And I was like, yep, that'll do. And then <laughs> the, the big, big finale is Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. Oh, I love that song. Right. And, uh, and that's the, and the 666, like the sixes are flying at you in time to the music. So you've got to chain the sixes out. The, so that's the huge, big showdown. And then the whole, I said, the whole thing is essentially just listening to a metal album and getting a hell of a workout as well at the same time. And, and, then, and, then, um, and then you're done. So I said, there's, there's no story other than Spawn Goes to Hell. I did have some ideas, which I didn't write in, the, in my pitch document, but I started to think about logically how Spawn would be going to hell. And I, I can't decide if he's going to be on a surfboard, maybe a glider, or maybe it's just like falling, like a kind of Alice in Wonderland style, just falling down into hell. Apart from I do know there has to be at least one level where he's in the Spawn mobile, that that would have to feature. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. They could just reuse the clip from the movie where he's just falling through hell. The, the, yeah. the ageless CGI. <laughs> yeah. Cycle that. <laughs> Lower the production costs. Yes, that's exactly it. Okay, so Wish Mage in the chat said we should use Highway to the Danger Zone from Top Gun um, for no reason. And it doesn't even really work with the theme, but I also agree. So I think I feel like that could work. We could do like a little, like maybe it's early on because it's he's not in hell yet, but he's perhaps on the way to hell. I love the, so anyway, another incredible. comment from Wishmage saying the game itself should cost $666. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easily, easily that, yeah. I mean, it will have to because of all the motion sensors and all the, the totally. outfit that it comes with. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. This is That's incredible. Yeah, I think, you've, I think you've designed the most intense game of all That's time. That's the idea. Like, it's a physically taxing game like few, you have to be in good you have to work out before you start this you're game. gonna be as ripped as michael jai white when you finish this game that's the idea isn't it it, it my, really makes you feel like spawn my <laughs> only i have my only track that i would suggest is square hammer by ghost if anyone knows this anyone knows oh, ghost? i i absolutely completely forgot to mention this because ghost was absolutely on my short list but I, okay but basically i said anything by ghost anything by ghost i was just thinking pin from the pinnacle to the pit would be a really good one amazing um, but 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 basically anything goes because they're super spooky um yeah. and then maybe just spawn the album yeah, there's already some pretty good what tracks is, on that there's that uh iced earth album you know that we could but that guy did did, <laughs> yeah, did that storm the capital <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a good one here from uh the one that doesn't count violated by cursed by earth. cursed earth yeah, yeah. so you, so this is so we that was that actual track was originally in my pitch document um, for the violator fight. I took it out and I replaced it with Heretic Anthem by Slipknot, being that it's like super gnarly. Mm. Um, also, it has six 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 in the lyrics, so again, it's just it's made for it. it's perfect. But also, yeah, we um, the guy from Cursed Earth stormed the capital we can't have that we're, nah. we're edgy but we're not that edgy <laughs> that is maybe too edgy i agree now i, I want to say maddie that your game you know a lot of like spider-man the arkham games you know they claim to make you feel like spider-man feel <laughs> like batman I, I feel like in your game you're not feeling like spawn you are spawn <laughs> you you've gone another another level so excellent yeah. job. i i yeah. have a few uh, band suggestions for the track listing you got go. uh alice in chains chains uh, the, the chains. jesus jesus and mary chain 
the the rapper two chains um that's all i've got so far but i'll this I'll is the dlc you. this is the chains dlc just you do you do chains dlc then you could do the cape dlc cape would be harder maybe the theme from cape fear first thing i could think of uh and then Sp- spikes dlc perhaps after that skulls dlc skulls would be easy to fill i think the, the, look we we this is a license to print money you guys i'm just, it's just... <laughs> the, my last suggestion a little bit different 666 by bon Iver. just a little mellow track you know maybe for the nice. credits yes <laughs> it's a little calm down yeah 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 like the last the last track is always just that nice mellow chill out track right yeah that's beautiful, man. I, I really hope <laughs> this video game happens. When you gave me the surface level idea, I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be like, like a silly thing. It's like, no, this is genuinely a great idea for a video game. <laughs> and I hope it happens. <laughs> well, I mean, I know for a fact that Todd's in the chat. He, I, he's watching. He's lurking. He's not commenting, but I know he's there. So, Todd, come on. Let's oh, get this got, going. We've got the chain uh, by Fleetwood Mac from Carlos Ramos in the chat. Great, great, one. great one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, next up, we have Josh with his pitch. For us oh, all. man, how can I ever top that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any visuals for mine, unfortunately. Um, but okay, right. I'll, I'll, try and, I'll try and make it as fun and engaging as that. My game, here's the title. First of all, imagine it. Imagine a fancy graphic. Sam and Twitch Case Files. That's, I'm going to let that one sit for a second. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, I love this. So, mm-hmm. so to, to the the uninitiated, to the newcomers, to the uh, congregation of Spawn here, Sam and Twitch are these like two uh, NYPD homicide detectives uh, who appeared in the pages of the Spawn comic book, and they kind of they represent the kind of comedy relief uh, to a lot of Spawn, um, but they also they kind of underpin the gritty street level side of spawn against this like supernatural backdrop of uh you know heaven and hell and demons and all that loopy stuff um and so uh, yeah i'll talk more about summer twitch specifically in a little bit but it's worth mentioning that a few months ago todd mcfarlane confirmed that there is a live action salmon twitch show in development tv series um matty looks surprised by this i didn't know that <laughs> he's yeah, always working he- on something yeah, whether it'll come out or not is uh, another question, but it was confirmed. And um, it's it's from the producers who did Mayor of Easttown. So it has some, uh, you know, some credentials. Uh, but basically, you know, the TV series is coming out. If you don't know Sam and Twitch now, I'm sure you'll be familiar very soon. And it, there's never been a better time for a Sam and Twitch tie-in video game. Because who doesn't love a tie-in video game? They're famously good. <laughs> High-quality products. I miss so, them. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, for every, I don't know, <laughs> dozen <laughs> very terrible Arkham ones. Game, there's a there's a Ghost Rider or yeah, a, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The uh, the diamonds in the rough. Okay, so Summon Twitch Case Files. This that's the name of the game. It's a survival horror with a uh, third person over the shoulder perspective. If that sounds familiar, then you know, think Resident Evil, think Silent Hill. Uh, and I'll talk more about those in a second. But basically, here's, here's Sam and Twitch in a, in a nutshell for you. Detective Sam Burke, he's this big, bolshy, brawny bloke. He's hot-headed and foul-mouthed, and he just uh, he just generally seems like a bit of a, a grumpy, you know, typical New Yorker. I, I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I Diego, can it's, I'm can... here, so it's cool. I, I give him a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Diego confirmed that he's a typical New Yorker. Totally. Um, he's the kind of New York cop who always has a cup of coffee in one hand and a donut in the other, and uh, and particularly in the early comics with uh, Todd's like cartoony style, he would he would always show Sam like in not very flattering poses. So with his, his big paunch sticking out. And uh, if you'd like mid sentence, but also simultaneously biting into a hot dog and like dribbling ketchup and mustard onto his shirt. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite endearing, but that kind of apparent ineptitude that he has, he kind of seems like a goofball, but it, it kind of belies his keen crime solving senses. And uh, you know, Sam is a good cop. He's like, he's good at what he does. He's, he, he gets results. Um, and he, even though he doesn't always play by the rules, 
but he's also fundamentally a good man. He has a strong sense of justice and honor and duty, uh, but he's not afraid to crack a few skulls along the way. And, and, you know, as I, as I'll talk about, he'll, he will be like the brawn. He'll be the, the melee fighter. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great interrogator. I think the interrogation scenes in, um, in the Arkham games where you're picking up thugs and <laughs> tell me now kind of thing. Um, so yeah, if, but if, so if, if um, detective Sam Burke is the bad cop, then the good cop role would be filled by his partner, Twitch Williams, who is kind of the, the brains of the duo. He's, he's quiet. He's very quiet compared to Sam, but he's calculating, he's calm, he's cool. And he's good with puzzles, which again, I, I think you can kind of see, the dichotomy between the two in terms of gameplay you'd have you know the brawn and and the brain doing the puzzle solving um twitch is the straight man in this like comedy duo and his deadpan sarcastic humor uh is really like the source of a lot of the comedy in spawn mainly the only comedy in, in spawn <laughs> and um but like despite the fact that he can be like quite sassy and has like sardonic r- replies to sam there's clearly a lot of mutual respect between the two there's a good dynamic there and it's uh, this is kind of exemplified by Twitch referring to Sam as Sir. Um, <laughs> you know, I always imagine it. Um, oh man, what is it? Is it like Peppermint Patty and and Marcy from Peanuts? That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Don't call me thinking. Sir. Well, well, I was thinking uh, Droopy Droopy Dog. In um, is it in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where he's the elevator uh, assistant? I might be getting mixed up with two different films, but he's like mind the gap, Sir. Um, so it's kind of like a <laughs> bad droopy dog impression. Um, so well, anyway, and does anyone here have a good droopy dog impression? Mm. <laughs> Mind the gaps. Uh... Ooh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you really pulled one out there. Um, okay, so Twitch is 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 also an expert marksman. So that kind of ties in with the fact that he's cool and calm and collected is that he can, you know, whip out a piece and, uh, <laughs> and you know, he always gets his man one shot, one kill. So again, you know, that's a gameplay element. You get the, uh, the, the, the gun shooting mechanics. Um, you need that in video games, I hear. It's very popular. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of the gameplay, it's, it, it's basically a survival horror and uh, kind of police procedural game with these supernatural David Lynchian elements. And I know that Lynchian is an overused term for anything that's like vaguely weird. But interestingly, when Todd McFarlane was first, when he first launched the Spawn comic, he kind of touted it to Wizard and people like that as a as a kind of David Lynch style comic. <laughs> Whether that's reflected in the actual comic or not is debatable, I'd say. Um, but definitely in terms of like the supernatural stuff, and the kind of the weirdo stuff that's that's what we're going for and uh, and again in terms of like police procedural imagine like again resident evil and silent hill you're kind of exploring the filthy back alleys of new york city and rat city and uncovering the crime scenes and and kind of doing real detective work that we kind of got a little bit of in the arkham games where you're like really solving crimes but i feel like that stuff was pretty basic you never really have to do a lot of brain work or puzzle solving uh, one of the best just kind of solves it all for you. Yeah, exactly. One of the, the the things that always sticks in my mind about the Arkham games is in Arkham Knight. Oh shit! What's the um the character's name? But the the pig face guy, <laughs> Batman. That's the one. The guy with <laughs> the guy with the pig face mask. Is I, it Professor Pig? Professor. Yeah, Pig. yeah. There it is. Yeah, that's right. So the, when you when you find him, um, Batman finds him by hearing a recording which has opera singing on it, and he uses that to to trace him around the city you know he finds the coordinates of where the opera singing is coming from and that's how he deduces where professor pig's base of operations is and that kind of detective work is i think kind of key to this um so yeah and so similar to again resident evil 2 where you have these like branching paths between leon and claire um as you face different scenarios i kind of obviously this is um, a duo, Sam and Twitch, but I want you to be able to pay, play as both. And I also don't want to separate them. So my solution to that is that you will switch between the two and you'll encounter different scenarios, but but you'll be you'll play as one and then the other one will be uh, like AI controlled, computer controlled. Um, but the, the kind of idea of that will be that obviously every scenario will require a different 
approach and a different perspective. So again, if, if you need to go in and, and be the brawn, then you play as Sam. But And the key to that as well is that you might experience the same scenario from both perspectives to get the full picture of the investigation. So there might be information that you discover as Sam that then you need to switch to Twitch to kind of put that information uh, into play. And again, you know, certain scenarios will, will require like Sam as like a melee character. He's like kind of combative combat combative combat is a stupid thing to say but <laughs> but um but yeah and then um and then you might need twitch's puzzle solving and i'm like definitely in terms of like the puzzle solving it's going to be like resident evil style like actual puzzles that you have to solve not just not just you know match pairs of numbers or you know tune into a radio using the analog sticks or anything like that no offense to the games that i'm obviously referencing there um so I won't waffle on about this too much longer, but basically in terms of story, you progress from like the street level mafia boss stuff where you're doing what you would expect uh, homicide detectives in New York City to be dealing with. And then uh, you progress up through, you know, all the way up to hell demons and supervillains and things like that. So early on in the game, you might encounter um, Overt Kill, <laughs> who I, oh, I'd put in there because, you know, I am, a, I am the internet's most vocal Rob Liefeld Mark. And... Uh, uh, overt kill is my favorite spawn villain so he's got to be in there but what i think is cool about him is he was an early villain in the spawn comics and he he kind of bridged that gap between like yeah he's like uh, a russian assassin but he also has this like cyborg element to him so it kind of bridges the gap between the mo the mafia stuff and the the supernatural stuff so that would be the first sign of like a superpowered being in this universe and um you know uh, blah, 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 blah. Spawn, Spawn will feature in the game, but he'll he'll have like a small part in it, like a background part in it. And as you play through the story, he kind of sets the supernatural backdrop, and he's mysterious. You never get a full look at him, but you're always aware of his presence. You know, you might get to a crime scene. So, like, you could work in Billy Kincaid. You're investigating Billy Kincaid, infamous child killer from the comics, and then you find out he's been murdered, and you have to go to the scene, the crime. And and that's when you become aware of Spawn, um, and and yeah, I I don't want Spawn to be the main focus basically, but yeah, lots of grisly crimes. Think about um, the film Seven, all these like super messed up, gory crime scenes that you're going to and seeing people with their heads twisted round 180 and the genitals cut out and things like that. <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> yeah. When Am I allowed? Am I allowed to say that on a charity live stream? Yes, you are allowed to say genitals. I said much worse on the opening panel yesterday. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, on that nice and light thought. Um... <laughs> Billy Kincaid, I've never heard of this character that you uh, referenced there. <laughs> no, so I, I, I if love there's one thing idea. I want you to take away from this, it's cut out genitals. That's my pitch. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's how that's how you sell a game <laughs> close always be closing with genitals abcg I, I love the idea of starting with the like grounded mafia stuff because when the when the supernatural start uh stuff starts to unfold it just makes it that much more exciting right like getting these glimpses at spawn and then building more and more until you know you see him a little more as, as the game progresses like i i love that kind of stuff just a grounded overall kind of vibe but then you got the, the supernatural hints in the background it just makes it like that much more exciting and like spookier in a way yeah for sure and another game i wanted to kind of like reference is uh 2019's control which kind of i think does a really good job of putting you in like a formal and very oppressive and corporate environment but then all this supernatural shit just it like spins out immediately and you have no context for it and you're just kind of scrambling and that kind of like panicked feeling of like what the hell is happening here that's the kind of feeling that i want to evoke in this game uh, and also i hear that when you're pitching a superhero game the thing to get the crowd on your side is to say and no microtransactions Yay! <laughs> well oh man I i'm afraid to start my pitch then because uh all right so let's jump into mine I'm, I'm really proud of it, despite uh, the microtransactions comment, because uh, my pitch is a multiplayer online only games as a service where you pay 15 to $20 for different spawn costumes. And uh, God knows there's a lot of them. So there's, there's a lot of money to be made there, Toddy Mac. 
Um, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> my actual pitch is an Arcane Studios uh, developed Spawn game. Uh, you guys, you've probably seen me rave about this on Twitter. Um, if you don't know Arcane Studios, they're known for their immersion sim type games that give the player a lot of customization and agency over how they carry out their objectives. Games like Dishonored, Prey, uh, the recent Death Loop. Uh, you know, you can go the stealth route, you can go in loud, you can focus your character to be more powerful with their supernatural magic abilities or level up their weapons kind of stuff. Uh, and Arcane, you know, they have experience with both shooting mechanics and melee combat. And I think this makes them a perfect fit for uh, a spawn game, especially when you take Dishonored into account. Because uh, if you ever played Dishonored, you know that you have this like wheel that you can bring up that shows you all the different kinds of abilities you can use. And what I like about Spawn is that his abilities aren't as clear cut as someone like Spider-Man or Wolverine. You know, you can do all sorts of things. You can teleport, turn invisible, shapeshift. He can do like just generic uh, necroplasm blasts. He can fly kind of more of a glide sort of uh he can manifest a bunch of chains he i, I think i've seen him stop time maybe at one point it, it might have been at a comic or with a tv show uh so the, the magic is li is limitless you, you can mold it contort it to do all kinds of different things and um and if you play this on it you can see that they, they do a good job of, of incorporating all these different kinds of abilities that let you go for more of a stealth route you know, defensive angle, kind of staying in the shadows or just jumping in there and tearing punks to shreds. And that's just the supernatural stuff, right? All the different magic stuff you can do. You can also go uh, the route that you upgrade, have more of a focus on upgrading your weapons, you know, your artillery, stuff like that. And for the shooting mechanics, I'd like to draw from the darkness and the darkness too. If you're specifically the darkness too, because the, the mechanic I'm about to mention here, I think was a little more uh, better fleshed out in that game. And that is the quad wielding mechanics. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but but that's what I call it. Uh, in the darkness, you play as this guy, Jackie Asakata, who, who's another spawn-like character. He's got this rad head of black hair, kind of like a rock star looking dude. He's also got like a symbiote thing going on where he can make weapons and make an armor. Um, to protect himself. Uh, but in the game, you have you can do wield weapons like pistols and Uzis, uh, but you also have these little tendril guys at the top left and top right corner of the screen. And you know, you shoot your weapons as you'd expect with the left and right trigger for each gun. And if memory serves right, I believe it's the left and right bumper to uh, control the tendrils. And applying this to a spawn game would just simply be taking simply like I'm a game developer would essentially be uh, taking that concept and just swapping out the tentacles for chains. So you're grab your whipping guys, you're grabbing them, slamming them against the, the wall, the floor. You can grab car doors or like manhole lids as you know, to hold up in front of you for cover. Um, you know, cause let's say hypothetically you, the, the route you chose to take your spawn, the way you upgraded and customized your spawns to have a stronger emphasis on weapons and offensive kind of moves you might not be as good as healing as my spawn is, where he had more of a focus on leveling up his magic abilities. And, you know, I'm, I'm able to uh, recover a lot more health with my healing ability, whereas you have to be more mindful to not take any damage. So you actually have to like use uh, stuff as cover, or like I said, you know, ripping car doors off and using them as a shield. And uh, another, and I would really want the player to feel like spawn, no. Um, <laughs> I want them to really feel like they could go any route, you know, the stealth route or the uh, the loud route, because uh, we've seen Spawn do both, right? If you watch the animated show, you you'll know that he he sticks to the shadows, he pulls people in with his chains, he covers them with their cape, you know, he could be the, the ghost type character. We've also seen him in, in in that same show or in the movie, just go balls to the wall, two M16s on each hand, and just pumping lead into the bad guys. And um, in other games like you know Dishonored, we've been mentioning um because of the backstory of the guy you play as i feel like the right way to play you know you, you play as this like assassin like guy who's got he's got this hoodie he's got this mask i feel like the right way to play that game is 
to do the stealth route, right? To not make my presence be known, be like a hitman. I was never there. Even games like uh, Metal Gear Solid V, you know, that insists like, oh yeah, you can go the stealth route. Oh, you can just go in with rocket launchers and blow up helicopters and stuff. I, I don't feel like that's the right way to play that game. Cause you know, Snake, he's this covert agent spy who should be crawling on the grass, you know, using vent shafts to not be, uh, to not alert the guards and stuff like that. Um, I feel like with Spawn, you can really just go either route because we've seen them do both through, you know, uh, do, do them well. Um, I personally, I like playing games stealthily. I just, I, I like the idea of like, you know, making it to the end of the level and no one ever knew I was there. But, you know, it will also be cool to just blast guys with necroplasm and cause explosions and just, you know, go in with grenades and M16s and just riddle the place with bullets. Um, Another question I, a question I tend to ask myself when, when pitching a, a superhero video game is to go open world or non-open world. And more often than not, I find myself going the non-open world route just cause like we get them often, right? Ever since Spider-Man 2, it feels like every superhero game is open world. You know, Spider-Man obviously popularized that format so much so that it feels special and exciting when we get something like Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, where it's like a more linear level by level uh, based thing. Even the Arkham games got more open world as they went along, which is why I like Arkham Asylum is my favorite. I like that it's this self-contained area that's like, you know, packed with a bunch of detail and stuff like that. Um, even, even Marvel's Avengers has some open world stuff, but like that game sucks. So F in the chat for Marvel's Avengers again, please. Um, Typing that right now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah so to kind of stick with the idea that this is a, a heavy arcane studios feeling game i would go the dishonored route where you got these levels that are expansive enough to allow for exploration and traversal you know to teleport around with whatever abilities you chose to upgrade if you want to teleport glide around or pull yourself up to rooftops using your chains uh but also scaled back far enough to allow for um, like discovering multiple routes that might be more fitting the, you know, for your spawn, depending on how you level them up. You know, if you want to avoid a, a group of enemies and you find like a secret passageway to the sewers where you can go into the sewers and avoid a group of enemies, you can do so. Or if you just want to, you know, go rip through, through the alleys and just tear these guys to shreds, you can do that. Or if you want to stick to the rooftops, you might encounter uh, a group of different group of enemies over there. And to also allow for detailed interior um, areas where you know you might find collectibles or hidden upgrades or something like that, and um, you know uh, comic book covers are always a great collectible to have in a uh, in a comic book game. You know, the most vital, to... the most vital aspect of Spawn, obviously. Yeah, and, the, the and being able to choose your own path is very important because, as Cogliostro would have us know, and that. Maybe Melbolgia wants us on a certain path, but really in the end, we must choose our own path so as is the burden of every spawn. It's thematically appropriate for, for the character. Perfect, look at that. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Thanks for the assist. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, so in between these levels, you'll have uh, the hub world, which again, I think Dishonored had a hub world, like this little bar area that you can chill out in between missions. And of course the hub world in the spawn game would be Rat City where you get to hang out with a bunch of homeless guys. And uh, most importantly, you'll be able to upgrade uh, your spawn. You'll, you'll be sitting on spawns, big fleshy uh, throne made of bones and stuff like that. And as you level up, you'll be eating handfuls of worms and rats. Cause as we all know, uh, you know, the essence of evil is found in worms and rats and, and bears and uh so, so bears, they're like bears obviously bears what's bears one of them most, I, most evil creature the bear. everyone knows worms bears and rats are a bunch of a-holes so I, <laughs> i'm legitimately thankful that you said eating handfuls of worms i was like <laughs> one of us has to have that in our pictures it's just handfuls of worms I'm so, Manny, I'm so glad that you weren't part of this because you would actually have like be mailing people worms to eat <laughs> your game just like eat them <laughs> eat the worms <laughs> So you got Spawn eating his worms as you level up because, you know, he used them to, to rejuvenate. And um, as, you're, as you're sitting there in your throne, I want to have Cog, like in Cogliostro, he's like Spawn's mentor kind of guy. 
as you're choosing your upgrades, he's like making comments on what you choose. Like, be like, hmm, have you thought of adding more chains to your abilities or something like that? So he's kind of like guiding you along the way, giving you some advice on, on what upgrades you should choose. Because, uh, you know, he, he's an ex-Hellspawn, uh, an ex-Hellspawn, if you don't know. So he's Judas cool. too. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just got to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the story here is simple because the more complex you go with Spawn, it, it, it just kind of starts to, to fall apart. Uh, so hell. Like uh, Maddie mentioned before, Hell has 12 spheres. So each has a ruler. So 12 rulers, 12 bosses, 12 levels. And they've come to Earth. They're stationed all around the world. So uh, you get a whole bunch of different levels. You know, it's a globe trotting uh, adventure. You start off in New York City, maybe you go to Japan, Mexico, I don't know, Canada, home of Todd McFarlane. Maybe he can make a cameo there. Um, and Spawn is there to intervene and prevent the end of the world. And that's uh, Arcane Studio Spawn. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag Spawn Timber in the chat. Spawn Timber in the chat, please. Let's let's manifest these Spawn video games to to real life. <laughs> well, I love it, and it, it I, I I don't I have no notes. This is so well th thought out. <laughs> like if I owned a studio, I'd stamp that. You know, full full steam ahead in production, but I'd produce all these games, obviously. You know, <laughs> just like, and I put them all out at once too. I'd have like a really bad strategy. Like I'd sink like hundreds of millions of dollars into all the games, and then I put them all out on the same day on all the systems, <laughs> and they'd all compete with each other, and then just I would just crash my studio. But that's because I'm. The number one spawn fan, obviously. Exactly. Recipe for success, if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> so with my spawn pitch out of the way, uh, I am so excited to hear what you have. Number one spawn fan in the world, Sp uh, Matt Draper. Thank you so much. Well, I just want to say we, just a few more minutes until we do our giveaway, which is a $30 Steam card, uh, Steam gift card. So you can all uh, buy a video game and pretend that it's spawn. Uh, we thought that would be the perfect giveaway for right now. And uh, I will be uh, raffling off things real soon. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to that one doesn't count who gave a donation and uh, mostly wanted to say hashtag spawn timber. Uh, Hi, Todd Alex, uh, who you might know, great YouTuber. So hey. gave a couple hearts with his donation. So, so back at you. Back mm. at you. That's hearts for you. Uh, and, uh, and Carlos F said, uh, thank you for all you do. This is a vital cause. And thank you for your donation, Carlos. And thank you to everyone that has been donating. Awesome generosity these last two days, obviously going to Project Hope, which is a worthy cause uh, for medical care. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to give back and also just uh, have a lot of fun and uh, entertain some people and also make some new connections with uh, with our panels today between everyone. So again, thank you to everyone for, for taking part. Um, yes, so uh, my spawn game, uh, I came up with this at the really last minute because unfortunately Godzilla Mendoza couldn't make it. So about you know, like 30 minutes before the panel, uh, Diego messaged me and said, can you be on the panel? <laughs> and I said, okay, <laughs> let's do it. Because Spawn Timber, you know. That's the spirit of Spawn Timber. So the yeah. spirit of Spawn Timber <laughs> is, uh, you know, um, just just supporting Spawn and each other, making connections for life to our love of Spawn. <laughs> so my pitch, which I came, I had a pitch that I came up with before the panel, and then I came up with a pitch about halfway into uh, Maddie's pr uh, presentation. I'm gonna go with that one. So as you know, the most important part of Spawn is Al Simmons' continual battle between light and darkness. It's very important. Will he give in to Malbolgia? Will he turn a page, become a, a true hero? And that's the back and forth, you know, he's murdering people and then he's not murdering people and then he's saving kids and then he's, crucifying randos in, in a dirty rat and covered alley and you know then he's getting you know special angel wings and saving the world and then he's uh wrapping his own human flesh in chains for no reason because that way he looks more hardcore and he's he's eating worms and then he's you know singing flintstones themes and it's a real back and forth <laughs> a lot of back and forth and i was thinking about what game really you know embodies that whole 
symbol between light and dark, uh, order and chaos. And I thought it's one of my favorite games from the last few years that I think we could really use as the, uh, the template for this. So this is Untitled Goose Spawn. And <laughs> if you're not familiar with Untitled Goose Game, you are a very bad goose who comes to a nice little uh, oceanside town and you uh, wreak havoc and just destroy things randomly for the sake of chaos. So I figured if we had a spawn game in the style of Untitled Goose Game, this would be the perfect way. And, and you know, Goose Game is all about the chaos, right? It's just pure, pure chaos, pure id. But we could have two sides. One side could be Violator giving you his missions, you know, on a really gross, dirty notepad, being like, here, do this and this and this. And here could be Cogliostro giving you his missions and ways to, you know, sort of so good or, or destroy the evil in New York. So we'd have a very kid-friendly version of New York that will open up more and more and more. Um, Spawn could be miniaturized too. He could have been shrunk down to about a quarter of the size. Cute little Spawn. Yeah, he could be running around like, you know, like the mini ashes in Army of Darkness uh, and causing <laughs> trouble, hiding, stealing a bucket, you know, pulling a, you know, a chair out from under someone, you know, and slowly, you know, he could be, uh, you know, finding a little, few little power-ups here and there, you know, a couple chains here, an ax there, all the better to, to you know, wreak havoc with. And it, it's all done in a very friendly style. It's not gross at all. There are some worms, but they look like cute little, like, uh, you know, Sesame Street worms or something like that. Um, so, you know, we, we go along our, our path as we open up, we, you know, we start in Rat City, obviously, you know, and we cause some trouble there, break down a gate. We open up more to, you know, uh, the rest of New York. We can open up all of New York City. We can open up the suburbs where, you know, families live and we can cause some trouble there or we can help out the kids, obviously. You know, we could uh, convince some, some people to, you know, uh, turn from their evil ways or we could, you know, uh, kill a, a, a child murderer with some popsicle sticks if we really wanted to, <laughs> you know, all done in a family friendly style. Obviously we would only hint at the darkness. Um, we could open up hell. Obviously if you opened up hell, you go into the, the eighth circle of hell. Uh, we all know that the eighth circle of hell is where spawn is from and Malbolgia controls, obviously hashtag spawn in the chat. And we want to destroy <laughs> hell, you know, and, and there we could really give into our id, but for the sake of good, you know, we're, uh, giving a violator a wedgie, you know, or we're uh, scaring the ghost of Billy Kincaid and he locks himself in a, like a phone booth or something like that. And, you know, we're just, you know, we're, we're building our world and we're destroying our world. And it's, it, it's all about that battle between light and dark inside a tiny miniaturized cartoonish spawn. And of course the ultimate goal of, uh, of untitled uh, goose spawn is that we want, of course, to break up Wanda's new marriage. That's the ultimate goal. <laughs> That's the big check mark. That is our golden bell that we got to get. And so we have to eventually, of course, um, you know, kind of go to her. Her home is the final thing. You know, we go in. We, of course, make friends with Cyan, you know, as her tiny spawn friend. We give her a shoelace. She, she begins to love us. Um, and then we, we sort of you know, put in hints around the home that Terry is being a terrible person. We really want to break up her, her marriage with Wanda. At the end of the game, obviously spoilers for Untitled Goose Spawn, is that we break up the marriage, we get back together with Wanda, we grow back to normal size. Also Spawn is not um, horribly scarred at all. This is more like the uh, adventures of Spawn for kids. You know, he's just a normal guy and everything's happy in the end. Uh, hell has been destroyed. Uh, our original marriage is reformed. Everything's great. And then if you want, we got, you know, a game plus where we can go back and just start, you know, breaking stuff. And uh, that's my pitch for uh, Untitled Goose Spawn. That is amazing. When, whenever you can, you can get kids on board for Spawn, that, that's always a win, you know. And, and another thing I want to point out, I love that on the top right or wherever, you'll have your simple goal of getting back with Wanda. You know, a, a, a lot of people give a lot of props to Breath of the Wild for having a very simple objective of just get to Ganon. And then the world is your playground, right? You, you figure out how you want to get to Ganon. And, you know, un, what is it? Is it Untitled Goose Spawn or Untitled, untitled Spawn? 
Untitled Goose Spawn. Okay, okay. And <laughs> Untitled Goose Spawn, just having the simple objective of get to Wanda is, is already like a surefire way to, to have this game be uh, successful. And but but it's also kind of tragic because Terry Fitzgerald is a pretty cool dude. But like we're trying to break up his marriage with Wanda, and you know he's a, he's a pretty good dad. And I nah, forget uh, that guy. <laughs> Who needs him? So it's kind of a tragic story, you know. I'd like to use a Matt Draper um, phrase and say that that pitch honks. Thank you, thank you so much. I, Man, I was just about to say that exact thing. It honks. <laughs> It, it's you know it's never more appropriate thank you that's kind of the highest praise that uh i could be given so i really appreciate it guys i really did just come up with that in the last half hour you couldn't tell <laughs> i could <laughs> <laughs> like every issue of spawn todd mcfarlane famously wrote it 30 minutes before it went to print <laughs> he just had a bunch of illustrations to go well this one spawns doing a backflip and he's like i guess i need to figure out why just <laughs> all right i you guys think about think about spawn think about video games i'm about to raffle off our, our next prize while uh matt is raffling off the prize i want to know i want to hear i think there's a clear winner but uh i'd like to hear from the chat which which spawn game you would uh rather play the most <laughs> is it the one that that came up <laughs> that was thought up in the last 30 minutes or <laughs> <laughs> one where I wrote up over the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the one that had a full uh, visual yeah. presentation? No, yeah, it had a full visual presentation. <laughs> the, the guy who stayed up three nights making a making a pitch document. And, and the Box guy up. who just completely swept us with, with the, what is it, uh, mutilated genitals? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that yeah. is a pitch. That's, that's a win. That is a pitch. Right who could argue with that and, and also in the comments you know I, i'd love to hear from you guys what your idea for a spawn game would be i earlier in the chat i saw lego spawn game uh, which again such, i wish i'd come up with that idea i wish i'd come up with that idea yeah that's um again and uh, you know any way to get the kids on board absolutely for lego spawn and the thing that's cool about the lego games is that you know they have the that large cast of playable characters and you know I'd we were talking earlier, to... weren't we? You said, Diego, you were thinking about doing like an Ultimate Alliance style. Yeah, yeah. Board I, game. I, I, and like Lego a... is just even better. Totally, totally. Because, you know, you can have all the different special moves and seeing characters like Violator and Overkill in, in Lego form would be kind of cool. You know? Absolutely. I, I was, orig... a... was going to say, I was... my first thought of a pitch was a Metroidvania spawn Ooh. where you sort of work your way out. And, you know, a lot of Metroidvanias go down. You know, eventually you uncover, you go down into, into hell. So you do it and open things up, get your different power ups, and then go all the way down. And I then can totally see that happening. Mel Bolger would sort of be like Kraid from Super Metroid. You know, mm -hmm. he's so big. You can see like half of him. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I went for the goose game. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Real quick, I have the winner. The winner of our $30 Steam gift card is Natty Charney. So uh, thank you so much, Natty, for uh, donations. And we will be trying to get in touch with you. If you're in the chat, please reach out. And uh, yeah, we're going to try and uh, get that Steam gift card out to you. So thank you so much. Congratulations to you and happy Spawn Timber. But we and still have a few minutes to go. A few minutes. OK, so uh, I had another pitch. An alternate pitch for me was a Dead Cells like, which is kind of similar to the Metroidvania idea you had, man. Say Dead Cells, uh, Hades inspired, uh, roguelike uh, spawn game. Because I, there's been spawn games in the past that tried to implement the necroplasm counter into the the gameplay loop, and some of them are ballsy, and you'll straight up die if it runs out. And I don't think, while I think that's a neat idea to actually like be faithful to the comics and say like, yeah, you'll be enslaved by Milboja if your necroplasm uh, counter runs out. Uh, I don't think it was implemented in the best way. I think you would really have to make that a core gameplay element that's the rest of the game is revolved around to really make it work. So I thought having a roguelike uh, spawn game like that sells where 
you're incentivized to, to die over and over. And, and, and it's kind of cool because it's got that whole, oh, you're stuck in limbo in, or in hell kind of idea. You're just going, you're, you would be trying to go, go through the different uh, spheres of hell all the way down to uh, the main ruler, it, 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 which is Satan, right? I haven't gotten all that far into the spawn cup, but I think the number one guy is Satan. There is the actual devil, Satan. He is, he is in there. Yeah, so as you progress through the game, uh, you do have your necroplasm counter and you use uh, your abilities along the way. And if it reaches zero, you'll, st you'll die and start from the beginning. But whatever upgrades you picked up along the way, you'll keep from the beginning. So you'll have to retread ground, but you know it'll get easier and easier each time you die because you've got new abilities and maybe different ways to kind of um, uh, make the most out of your necroplasm counter. That sounds wonderful too. Like it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, uh, my other pitch is just spawn in Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's about going. to happen. It's got to happen it, yeah, at some it has point. To. The, the most likely, the most likely outcome. If I could have stretched that out for fifty minutes as my pitch, that's what it would have been. <laughs> so you buy them, right? And then you just kind of you play the game. But you get you buy you buy a spawn and then you, you kind of spawn, but you're and not you really playing. People. Yeah, there you go, and it works because you know there's guns in Fortnite, right? Yeah, pickaxe could be chains or or the spawn axe, the glider could be his cape. Uh, oh, you can also you, you also have like whenever you free fall in Fortnite, you leave like a little trail behind you. The trail could be necroplasm, you know, so it, it totally works. Absolutely. Uh, so the, the emote can be Wanda. You know, so <laughs> one one last pitch off the top of my head. If I was in a pitch meeting and my pitch had been rejected and I was desperate, this is what I would I'd come back with. Pokemon Snap, but with spawn. So oh, you just I'd play that. <laughs> on a track taking photos of demons and Malbulger and Yeah, be good. Like a little train ride through hell. <laughs> And yeah. you're just snapping away. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. Mopi has an idea. Uh, Twisted Metal, but with Spawn, which is uh, similar to... Like uh, vehicular Combat. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Josh had a, had an idea of a Spawn kart racer. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, so I'm, saving, I'm saving that for an actual meeting with Todd McFarlane. I still, I still have my, my Violator action figure. See, on the back, you've got, you've got the Spawn Mobile and the, the Clown truck which is just a truck with a clown face on the front. So, I mean, that's basically Twisted Metal, right? There's like the clown who drives the truck. Yeah. Spawn, Spawn did it first. I think Toddy Mac has a case. Yeah. Now he gets to be on the opposite end of a lawsuit. <laughs> Doesn't, don't Sam and Twitch, they get their own car too. They call it like the Crime Mobile or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a red hot rod kind of thing. Spawn has a motorbike and a car. Houdini's like the, got a car, a flying car. Oh, yeah. Houdini's flying car, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People in the chat that haven't read Spawn are going to be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Any other ideas in the chat? Yep, Mario Kart. Yeah, Spawn Karts. We, we knew that was, that was the, the, the pitch that wasn't. It was the greatest idea that never made it to the table. Good friend Carlos has uh, spawns changed the way you control the monster and Carrion. Yeah, it's, uh, Carrion's another Metroidvania-like game where you uh, control this monster and it's kind of physics-based the way you pull yourself with tendrils and stuff. Always love some physics-based platforming. All great ideas, all propelled by uh, an endless well of creativity that is Spawn. Yeah, this is true. So this is the this is the thing about. It. So I had a discussion with a friend of mine. I was talking to Diego about this actually off camera. A friend of mine says that Batman is the greatest literary character of all time because he works in any historical period and in any genre. And unfortunately, that person is wrong because the the greatest character is Spawn, because Spawn actually works in in any time period. So here's the thing. So when but you remember when Batman died, Batman R.I.P. and they put him through time, and he was like a pirate Batman. He was like a caveman Batman. That's all well and good. Spawn already did all those things, by the way. There was already a pirate spawn and there was already a caveman spawn. But do you know what you couldn't have? You couldn't have a dinosaur Batman, but you could have a dinosaur spawn. It absolutely right? works. And that's it. So 
Spawn has one. He's, he's got one more on top. You can never have dinosaur I, Batman. I am afraid to tell you that there has now been a dinosaur Batman. D- get out. Dark Knight's Metal. And with the Dark Multiverse, oh, there is a dark yeah. Batman that is the T-Rex, the animatronic T-Rex. From the Batcave. Possessed by the consciousness of Bruce Wayne. D- is there a giant penny Batman as well? Oh, that would be amazing. I don't think there is. But still, I think that spawn uh, a spawn dinosaur would work better. There's, there's. Oh, we've had robot Batman as well as well. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of. Is there a, about aliens? Has there been an alien Batman? There's definitely been an alien spawn. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Like an actual alien, not like a. Oh, I'm human from another planet. I mean, like an alien, green skin and scales, and there's been. Oh. There's definitely. There's definitely a few of them. Hmm. That's, Sorry. So who is who's this Batman guy you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like this is he a spawn, spawn character spawn. <laughs> yeah yeah well you, can, you know it's a little bit venom and a little bit batman but dark the dark knights um metal series is just proof that dc are like 30 years behind image comics they're oh, desperately yeah. trying to catch up desperately trying to catch up i i mean i read all of death metal and uh it made me wish i was reading spawn <laughs> <laughs> I think I hope they put should... that. They should put that on the cover of the trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have reading spawn. Matt Draper, number one spawn fan. Uh, we should probably wrap up in a few minutes, guys. Anything else you want to say about spawn, spawn timber, video games? Uh, spawn timber has been a lot of fun. I hope uh, you all enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed our pitches. And look forward to more spawn timber next year. Uh, will it will it rival December at one point? I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, gunning for my gunning for my themed superhero month crown here. And if I was a Daredevil fan, now I'd be quaking in my boots. Yeah. <laughs> How do you follow this? I just want to let everyone know that. Um, oh, actually, Owen just brought up a good point. Well, we're if we're doing a, a Spawntober. So it doesn't even have to end here. We can yeah, have... we're doing Spawn Toba, Spawn Vember, and we're actually doing Spawn Sember this year as well. So <laughs> December, you might as well not bother, Matt. You might as well not bother. <laughs> All right, that's fine. It's a lot of work. I can stop. <laughs> I have to say, not, not to plug my own stuff too much, but I was hoping to get a second Spawn video in Spawn Tember, and that does not look very likely now. So Spawn Toba might be a reality on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> please carry on the spirits spawn your area it gets a little weird there it's because then spawn February like I don't know <laughs> I don't know if it works all that well we, we did mention at the opening panel of uh, Sparch so Sparch yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen it, if you will it it is no dream so I say make it happen all right well thank you everyone for uh hanging out with us in the uh, Super Spawn Brothers panel. And I hope you enjoyed our video game pitches and uh, enjoy the rest of uh, at-home Comic-Con. It's been a lot of fun.